hang out, but the first one I like to show is ruse. And ruse is an active test done by the patient. It's the most sensitive test for any type of thoracic outlet syndrome, especially vasculogenic, meaning you're going to get a ton of false positives in the ruse. It's very sensitive. So I want you to bring your arms up like this. You'll be in a 90-90 position, just like that. Hands facing forward like that. And keeping your arms up like that, I want you to open and close your hands about twice a second. So one, two, three, four, five, good. And then I watch the clock. I'm not doing this for three No, you're not doing it for three minutes, because you're going to test positive. Um, so ideally, we'd, have, we'd do this for three minutes. And if they didn't have any kind of symptoms in three minutes, they, you could probably rule out just about anything that had to do with thoracic outlet. But everybody, a lot of people will test positive. And symptoms are numbness, tingling, weakness, obviously. Those are going to be symptoms. But also inability to, to open and close your hands at the same speed. So one hand's doing this and the other hand's like that. Or one arm just start, starts to drift. Mm. So any symptom like that where you're not able to continue doing exactly what you're doing for three minutes would be a positive. Ruse, like I said, every, just about everybody's going to be test, testing positive on this. But it's a good screening test. If you thought somebody had thoracic outlet, let's say they came into your office with a diagnosis of thoracic outlet, and you wanted to confirm that diagnosis, do this. If they don't test positive with this, they don't have it. Because just about everybody will test positive with this. So if they don't, they don't have any issue with neurovascular uh, supply to the upper joint. So that's ruse. The rest of them, we're going to be testing the pulse. And this is where the whole vasculogenic part of this comes from. So, the first one I'm going to show you is adsins and reverse adsins. So, adsins and reverse adsins, we're testing the pulse. So, I'll do both adsins and reverse adsins on this side of the body. You would always test bilaterally. So, I find the pulse. I always make sure that I can feel the pulse for a little bit before I start moving the patient. Sometimes... If you go way too soon, you find it for a second and then it's gone, no matter if you move it, the arm or not. So, okay, I got the pulse, it's there, it's strong, and it's been there for the last five, six seconds. So now I can start this test. So I bring the arm back here like this. So I horizontally AV duck the uh, shoulder and extend the shoulder, bring it back like that. And then what I want you to do is try to look at, that, at, at this palm. So that really kind of almost, maybe you can bring your neck back there again. Maybe it actually puts the patient in somewhat of a maximal foraminal compression type position. And I got a good strong pulse here. So now take a deep breath and hold your breath. Pulse is still there. So when you're reading about these tests, especially AdSense, reverse AdSense, Edens, uh, there's some steps here. And if you're palpating the pulse, make sure you can do it you go to the next step, you, you make sure that you can still palpate the pulse. Then you go to the next step. A lot, way too many people do this too quickly. And you don't know if they, they moved a little bit and all of a sudden the pulse is gone because you messed up. Or if you can actually feel it. So I usually take my time here. I palpate the pulse. It's good and strong. Then I move on to the next step. The next step is, Michelle, go ahead and try to look at your palm here. There we go. Okay, the pulse is still there. So now go ahead and take a big deep breath, as big as you possibly can take, and hold it. Pulse is still there. We're good. Go ahead and breathe. So that's adsins on this side. Reverse adsins on this side is the same thing. Palpating the pulse. Turn your head the other way. Try to look over this shoulder. Pulse is still there. Take a big deep breath as deep as you can possibly take and hold it. Pulse is still there. Go ahead and breathe. Negative. For adsins and reverse adsins. The reason we're doing this position is because it stress stretches this whole area. Then we move the neck or we move the head to this side and take a big deep breath because that might actually elicit scalene contraction. And if the scalenes are part of the problem that the neurovascular bundle is impinged, then we might have a decreased pulse there. The reason we do a reverse adsense is because in 50% of the population, scalenes actually does contralateral rotation, not ipsilateral rotation. So we turn the other way. Maybe that's the way that gets these scalenes most, most uh, you know, shortened. They, they, a bunch of monkeys uh, probably freely volunteered their lives for, this, mm. for these tests to decide uh, what was going on with the scalings. And they decided that it's variable. So they killed a bunch of monkeys to decide, well, we don't really know. 
But they were higher order primates because they, they represented the same musculature in the neck. So scalenes, I, I don't know what you were taught, if you were taught ipsilateral, most uh, anatomy teachers will teach that scalenes do ipsilateral order rotation, but they do both depending on patient. So on some people, reverse adsense is better, on some people, adsense is better. Now Eden's, another, another few steps here. So this one, bilaterally, so from behind, and I bring the arms back as far as I need to to be able to do this bilaterally. If Michelle was seven foot tall, arms would be out here. Like I'd have to bring her, arm, her arms back quite a bit further to be able to do this. Um, there's probably a range of small doctor, large patient where it's not going to work. But for the most part, you horizontally abduct the, the arms like this until I can comfortably hold both arms. And I'm holding them like this. If their arms are too heavy, you can do it like this. But I find the pulse is a little bit harder to, to, to uh, palpate here for me. So I have no problem holding Michelle's arms like this. Find the pulses. This one, i got to shift a little bit. It's almost gone already. Right? So, are your shoulders relaxed? She's already positive on this, though. Let's pretend. So, first thing I want you to do is kind of let your back slump forward a bit. Keep your neck up. No, your neck right here. Slump Sorry. forward. Okay. There we go. And look up. There we go. Now, jump your chin forward. There we go. Take a big, deep breath and bear down like you're doing a Valsalva. Her pulses are completely gone. Here. Go ahead and come back up. So, we got a little bit of compression. Yeah. This one went away very quickly. The other one went away. Was that part of the That's second part you did? Yeah, all, it's or all those steps. Those aren't just second part. It's each step is part of Eden's. Could you go through that one more time? Yeah, there's a picture of it in, in your notepad. Right. Not the handout, but in your notepad it, and sequentially. Oh. Uh, so okay. it'll make a lot more sense too. So slump forward. Drive your chin forward. Take a big deep breath and bear down. Her pulses are already gone. So I wouldn't even need to do that far. Like, if the pulses go away, like the second step, I don't need to continue because I know they're going to be gone. So there's something going on, costoclavicular issues. Uh, that's compressing that. And that's, that could be what's going on with the home. Would you usually, you'd have the pulse gone in both, both arms, or it would no. just be where it's normal to keep the pulse? Yeah, normal would be if the pulses didn't disappear. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a positive would be the pulses disappear. It's not a perfect test. It's really not awesome to only have one positive. So far, that's the only thing that's been positive on her. Well, Ruth would have been two. So now we're 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 mounting some information. She's got. We already know she's got ulnar nerve tension, and that there's something going on. It probably has to do with these positives. Okay. So that's Eden's. Rights. Basically, the same position you start off at Eden's, but now I have to lift the arms up into abduction. So notice, everybody, raise your arms up. Try to keep your palms down and, and abduct your shoulders. Notice what happens at your elbows. You get about here. You can still keep the palms down, but your elbows are going to are gonna start moving. You really have to, to be able to do this, you have to be able to externally rotate your arms. So if you watch your humerus, when you get about here, your humerus is going to start externally rotating. And I only bring that up because when people try to bring the arms up, if you don't let the humeruses humor eye, <laughs> externally rotate, you're going to jam their shoulders right about here. So, palpate the pulses, bring them up like this, nice and slowly, and see how I'm allowing the humerus to externally rotate there. There's hyperabduction. Uh, that's a rights hyperabduction test or rights test. So there's probably something going on underneath the clavicle. Both sides. Both sides. Yeah. Um, so that's rights. So you got Adsons, reverse Adsons, Edens, rights, and then the screening test, ruse. Uh, and that's basically the, the vasculogenic package. Then the last thing that I'm going to talk about is the breathing pattern disorder test. Super easy. What's that? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peripheral artery compression. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that now. Actually, it's, it's a fun test. Sometimes I'll leave that for the wrist because it actually is a little bit more pertinent for wrist issues. 
Uh, Allen's is to see if both the ulnar and radial arteries are patent. So what you'll do is hold the radial and ulnar arteries like this. Go ahead and just pump your hand. I'm going to compress the arteries, so I'm not taking a pulse. I'm compressing the arteries to close them off. Her hand turned white very quickly. Gather around. Go ahead and stop doing This is pretty cool. Peyton means open. <laughs> Watch this. I'm going to, I keep her arm up here, all the blood's out of her hand. I'm going to drop the arm, have her open her hand, and, and let go of one of these arteries. And we'll hopefully see normal. Go ahead and open your hand up. You see how that just gets red like that around there? And now the other side uh, gets red. So these arteries come in like this, and they communicate up here. So now I need to do the same thing on the other artery. Go ahead and open it close. Your hand's already white. Let's make it a little whiter. Okay, good. Yeah, squeeze fist, make a fist. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and relax and open your hand. And it starts to get red right there. Not as dramatic as the other side, actually. So there could be.